Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I want to talk today about something that seems to be confusing a few people, especially based on a few comments on the previous power supply repair video I made. So what I want to talk about is why an ATX power supply has two capacitors here. Yeah, these are your main smoothing capacitors. This one has two 470 microfarad capacitors. They're both 200 volts each. This is a fairly typical ATX power supply. So I'll just briefly explain to you how the whole thing works. I've talked about this before, but hey, we can do it again, yeah. So what we have here, this is the mains voltage coming in, which goes through a fuse to a bridge rectifier. Now this bridge rectifier is made up from four individual diodes, but it could also be an encapsulated bridge rectifier. I'll just show you one. It could be something like this. So basically inside this is literally four diodes that we see here. Yeah, you can see this is marked AC input on the two middle pins and then plus and minus and that's what these four diodes are doing they're just doing what one of these has inside it but they've used separate diodes you'll find both types on power supplies but it's really nothing to concern yourself with all we really need to know is that this takes the ac input and it gives a dc output so coming out of here is dc but it's not a constant dc it's like a pulsed DC. So these capacitors then convert that into a smooth DC voltage of about 320 volts. Now you may wonder why you get 320 volts out of, in my case, 240 volt mains. That's because the 240 volts on AC here, the 240 is the average voltage. A sine wave basically going up and down like so. So at some point it's passing zero volts, positive, negative, positive, and it's passing through zero, okay? So the average or root mean square, which is the technical term for it, is the 240 volts AC. But the peak of the sine wave, either side, is more like 320. And that's why these capacitors charge up to 320. On the two heat sinks here, you'll see we have on this one, two switching transistors so these are your main transistors your main drive to the transformer that generates the 5 volts the 12 volts and the 3.3 volts okay and those two transistors drive this transformer so this has a primary that these transistors are switching in a way i'll describe shortly to you and then that induces voltages into the secondary and then this transformer generates the 3.3, the 5, and the 12 volts, okay? There's also a standby power supply on here because for you to start the power supply, your motherboard needs to have power, your ATX motherboard, and when you press the start button, the power supply on, it sends a signal to here to switch it on. So to do that, your motherboard needs a standby power supply, okay? And that's what this transformer is doing. So this is the standby and this is being driven by this transistor, almost certainly a MOSFET, okay? And that's generating the standby voltage. That also powers up this chip, by the way. This chip is the Portsmouth modulator, the one that drives the main transistors, these two switching transistors, okay? So basically, you plug the power in and the standby power supply comes on automatically and it sends five volts out on this purple wire. And when you press the start button, your motherboard is using this five volt supply to power up part of the motherboard. That part of the motherboard, the super IO chip, knows that you've pressed the button and it puts zero volts on this one, okay? And this zero volts switches this chip on basically and this chip starts to drive the transistors, okay, under there. Now, you'll notice the power supply has a high voltage side and a low voltage side. And if you look, there's a wide gap along here and down here, okay? And there's no electrical connection from this side to this side, okay? 
So the way that this chip drives these transistors is via the third transformer, that one. And that one effectively is the base drive. It drives the base terminals on these transistors to turn them on and off alternately. And that's what drives the main transformer to give us the main power output. So what we really have here, just to recap, is a standby supply that puts five volts onto the purple wire, okay? Your motherboard, when you press the start button, sends a zero volts back on the green wire, starts this chip, and this chip via this transformer starts to switch these transistors to drive this transformer, which drives all the rest of the outputs. So that's the basic function of an ATX power supply. And I think a lot of you probably know most of that, especially if you see in my other videos. I actually made one, all you need to know about ATX power supplies to fix stuff. And I've explained that in depth on that video and I will link it from this one, okay? Now back to the main question. Why do we have two capacitors here? Yeah, why do we have two 470 microfarads 200 volt capacitors. Why don't we have one 470 microfarad 400 volt capacitor? Uh, is it because it's cheaper to use two 200 volt capacitors than it is to use one 400 volt capacitor? Yeah. Uh, and for that matter, with this transformer, why do we need two transistors to drive it? And how are they driving it? Yeah. Uh, how are those two transistors working to drive this transformer? And is the fact we have two transistors somehow related to the fact we have two capacitors? Yeah. Well, to understand the circuit, the first thing we need to know is how these capacitors are connected. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, here are our two capacitors, one, two, yeah? And I think you can clearly see that one end of one is connected to one end of the other one. But the two other ends are not connected to each other. So these are not in parallel, they're in series. This end goes to this end, but these don't go together, okay? The bridge rectifier, which is these four diodes, we can see which is the output, which is the DC, okay? Let's have a look. So the AC you can see is coming in here. These are the AC terminals here and here. And then one end will be positive and one end will be negative coming out. We can actually figure out which one is which just by using diode mode on the meter. But we can also figure it out just by looking how the capacitors are wired up. So with a bridge rectifier, if we put the red meter lead and we're in diode mode onto one of the AC terminals, we should see a diode junction to one side, that side, yeah? If we go to the other AC terminal, we see a diode mode. So effectively, I'm putting the red lead on the AC, I'm putting positive in, and it's coming to here. So this is the positive end of the bridge rectifier. And this will go to one of our capacitors. That one, meter was just giving me a bit of a strange reading there, dodgy lead, okay? So the positive end goes to here, yeah? And if we look, you'll see that as the positive side of this capacitor. The negative side of this capacitor here is the one that goes to the other end of the other capacitor, which is the positive end again. These are both negative ends, okay? So positive from the bridge rectifier connected to here. The negative of this one goes to the positive of that one. And then the negative of this one will go back to the bridge rectifier, which is here and it comes back to here. This is your bridge rectifier. And this is your negative end of the bridge rectifier. And the way we can prove again, this time we put the black lead on the AC terminals, either of them, and we should see a diode junction to here. Yeah. So we're now sending a negative, and it comes through the diode to here. So this is the negative end. That's the other AC, okay? So when we're injecting the negative on either AC, it comes to this end. When we're injecting, if you like, the positive, on the other AC, it comes to this end. So what we have here, and we can just mark it, this is positive, and this is minus. 
and this is about 320 volts okay we can mark it so that's how the capacitors are wired they're wired in series let's draw that on a bit of paper then and let's see what that really means okay so we have live and neutral coming in ac yeah and they go through the fuse and they'll actually go through another component this thing here this black thing this is not a capacitor it's actually a thermistor it's a negative temperature coefficient so this will initially start off with a small resistance maybe 10 ohms something like that and as the current passes through here charging up these capacitors this will warm up and as it warms up the resistance decreases so the idea of this component is that when you first plug in you don't get a massive surge of current coming through here into the capacitors which could just blow the fuse just the actual initial surge or inrush of current this starts off as a resistance so it limits the current but once it warms up a little bit these are charged up it then effectively acts like a short i'll show you on the diagram so our thermistor is actually here symbols like that and it's an ntc or negative temperature coefficient okay which basically means the warmer it is the lower the resistance this ac then comes into our bridge rectifier which as we've seen on ours is actually made up of four diodes so let's draw it we have one diode like so and the other one is actually the other way around like so Okay. and from this side we have another diode pointing this way to here and we have another one pointing the other way to here okay that's our bridge rectifier this end is a positive okay and this end is a negative as you probably know diodes conduct in one direction from the anode to the cathode so basically the way this works when this side of the ac is positive with respect to that one the current flows through this diode to the positive here okay and when this one is positive with respect to that one the current flows through that diode to this point here so this always gets the positive yeah and the other two diodes are the other way around and this always gets the negative so that's how it actually converts the ac into dc but the voltage here basically if you look at our ac like so uh, what you actually get here is both half cycles but positive it effectively inverts this half cycle so what we see here is this okay that being zero volts so we only get positive and what we actually see here is that there's been no volts just the negatives okay if this was 50 hertz mains this will give you 100 hertz because you're getting two positive peaks for every single cycle yeah you get 50 of those a second but you're basically getting 100 of those a second yeah that half being inverted okay that's the basic stuff this then goes to our two capacitors and we know because we've just looked at them they're wired like this Okay, in the middle, connect together. 470, 200 volt. 470, 200 volt. Okay, I'm going to have to answer the question now, why do we have two capacitors in series? Well, let's have a look what actually happens when we connect capacitors, and for that matter, resistors in series. Here we have two resistors. These are both 1K resistors. So let's connect them in series and let's see 
what we have. Okay. We'll connect the resistors in series. So we now have two 1K resistors. I'll put a little bit of solder so it doesn't just fall off. There you go, make a good connection. We have our two 1K resistors in series. Let's measure the resistance. I'll go to ohms range. So this resistor reads 1K, almost. Uh, 0.995 over K, it's 1K. And this resistor also reads 1K. And the two together reads almost 2K. So if we put two 1K resistors in series, we get 2K. Okay, one adds on to the other one. Let's try that with two capacitors. So this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor, 16 volts, okay. I knew it was here somewhere. Here's another one, yeah, so we have the two capacitors. So let's connect these in series as well. And these are polarized, you have a positive and a negative. So we're gonna connect these like our ATX power supply. The negative of one will go to the positive of the other, okay? Right, a little bit of solder again. So we have our two capacitors in series, okay? Let's measure what we've got. And we'll use the capacitance meter, obviously. I'm on the 2000 microfarad range. Let's measure these individually. So this is the first one. And it reads almost a thousand, it's close, yeah. And the second one reads almost a thousand. Now let's read across the two of them, like we did with the resistors. Do we get 2000? No, we don't. We get 400, almost 500, yeah? So when we wire two capacitors in series like this, we don't get the sum of them. We get half if they're both the same value, okay? So two 1K resistors in series gave 2K. Two 1000 microfarad capacitors in series gave 500 microfarads, okay? Let's put some voltages onto these with my bench power supply. I have my bench power supply set to 30 volts. I'm sure you can see it if we just angle this over here. Yeah, you can see it there, 30 volts. Let's connect our resistors. We'll put the meter on voltage range. And let's see what happens. So we'll put 30 volts across the two resistors. Okay. They're not getting particularly warm because there's not much current flowing. Let's measure the voltage. So from the negative to here, this is the 30 volts coming in, yeah? Let's just do it where you can see it. So negative to positive, 30 volts. What's on the junction? Well, we have 15 volts. Okay, so half the voltage is across this resistor and half is across this resistor. Yeah, let's try that with the capacitors. You know our capacitors are only 16 volt capacitors, yeah? What's going to happen? So we'll put the negative onto here and we'll put the positive onto here, yeah? Let's see what actually happens. Well, a little spark. You like a little spark? The reason we got a little spark is because the capacitor's charged up suddenly, yeah? So the voltage across our capacitors is 30 volts. What's across this one? 15. And this one? Just slightly less, 14.97, 15.1. So you can see that although we connect to capacitors in series, we get half of the capacitance. It also acts as a voltage divider, the same that this does. So if you have two equal value capacitors in series, you get half the capacitance, you get a voltage divider, so the voltage across this one is half of the total, and the voltage across that's the other half of the total. Yeah. And you can use 16 volt capacitors, two of them together, which will now withstand 32 volts. So that's what actually happens. 
let's look at our circuit now we have our two transistors down here and we also have the transformer coil okay so let's get the meter onto ohms range okay to bleep okay ohms range our two transistors are here and here there's three pins and three pins okay so we know this is the positive end of the bridge rectifier we can see in fact the track comes up here to the capacitor and it goes across to this transistor so this transistor is actually connected to the positive 320 volts okay and the other side of the transistor here you can see it comes to the middle pin on this one so that's the junction between the two they're in series and this one will go back to the negative end of the bridge rectifier okay so not only are our capacitors wide in series our transistors are also wide in series and if we also look from the junction of the two transistors goes to the primary of the of the transformer yeah so the junction drives the primary of the transformer which is here okay you can also see it here because the coils are very low resistance i'll show you how this is connected up and what we know okay so we here have 320 volts yeah the junction of the two capacitors will be half of that like we've just proven so here we'll have 160 volts okay our transistors are wired like so collector emitter collector emitter and the wires from the 320 volt the positive end of the bridge rectified the negative end we've just measured it and that's our two transistors okay and the junction of the two goes to the transformer coil okay now there's two ways this circuit can work and i'll show you the most basic way so in the most basic way the other end of this transformer coil goes back to the capacitors like that okay so it's connected between the junction of the capacitors and the junction of the transistors these transistors are driven by the pulse width modulator chip but it doesn't switch them both on at the same time how it works is this this one switches on so it gets a pulse on the base okay that switches this one on and then after a very short period of time it switches off again now the other one switches on so that's this one so this switches on i'll just draw some dotted lines so we know where we are this one switches on here and switches off again okay then the other one switches on again okay off again and as this one switches off this one switches on again so you can just the junction there yeah that junction at that point in time there this which is on again and off so basically they are being driven in antiphase one then the other okay when this one turns on look what happens this end of the capacitor is at 320 volts this is at 160 so there's 160 volts across here when the transistor turns on effectively that transistor becomes a short so when it's on effectively this point is connected to this point okay and we now have a circuit from the positive of the capacitor through the transistor which is effectively zero ohms through the coil and back to the other end of the capacitor so this capacitor will do what a capacitor does when you connect both ends together you know what a capacitor does when you when you short it out it discharges so at this point this capacitor will discharge and it does it via this transformer winding so it sends current like so in this direction okay 
This end of the coil is positive, and this end of the coil is negative. But before that can fully discharge, this transistor will switch off again. Okay, and the other one will switch on. What happens now? Well, now, this transistor is effectively short circuit, yeah? This one's off again. So, we have a similar thing. The positive end of this one, this is the positive end of this capacitor, yeah? That's the negative end. The positive end of this one is shorted via the coil, via the transistor, to the negative end. So, this capacitor will effectively try to discharge, or it will discharge somewhat, and this will send current that way through the coil. So, this is now the positive end, and this is now the negative end of the coil, and the current goes that way, okay? In the meantime, this one's charged back up again, by the way, and this transistor now switches off, this one switches on, and it goes again. So very rapidly, and hundreds of kilohertz, a very high frequency, the controller will switch these two transistors and alternatively short each of these capacitors, but it shorts them via the transformer primary. And that's why you get, coming through your transformer, effectively you get an AC signal. A square wave AC signal, yeah? And the voltage is such, look. That point is the 160 volts. That's the mid point, yeah? Think about it. When both these transistors are switched off, if you measure the voltage here, because that's just a wire, it's just a piece of wire, the voltage here will be the same as the voltage there when they both switched off, yeah? So the mid voltage is 160 volts. The lowest voltage is zero when you short this one effectively through this transistor, okay? So the lowest voltage here is zero volts. And the highest voltage is 320 when effectively you short this one through this transistor, okay? So at this end, it's 320 volts. So your waveform is actually 320 volts high but one end of your transformer has 160 volts on it effectively all the time, the midpoint. So what you see here is a waveform that is plus 160 volts, minus 160 volts, if you took that as a reference, if you measure from here rather than from here, okay? So that's how the circuit works, almost, <laughs> yeah. And this is called a half bridge. the half bridge and it drives the transformer in both directions rather than a simple switch mode power supply which just pulse pulses through in one direction yeah there's another upshot from this on the output there'll be a number of secondaries but on the on the secondaries the wire like this we have a center tap on the winding and we have i'm going to run out of space Sorry guys, the secondary winding is like this, okay? Primary, secondary, okay? It has a centre tap. That centre tap is the naught volts on your ATX power supply, the black wires. That's the black wires, your ground, yeah? From each end of this transformer, you'll have a rectifier diode like that, okay? This end is your plus, let's say this is a 12 volt supply, yeah? You'll have the electrolytic capacitor here. You'll probably have an inductor here as well to help with the smoothing, and another electrolytic capacitor here. Do you have a stable 12 volts, yeah? And this one connects back to there. So when you pull current through your primary that way, it induces current into the secondary that way. This end becomes a positive and this diode conducts, yeah, and sends to there. So this goes positive, yeah. When you pull current through the transformer the other way, okay, the secondary pulls current the same way, 
if you like, and this end becomes a positive, and this diode conducts, and you still get a positive here. So this is full wave rectified with two diodes. Whichever end of this is positive, that diode or that diode conducts. That's why on an ATX power supply, and you've often seen it, you'll rectify your diodes. I can't clearly see them on this one. I'll show you some. But your rectifier diodes are double diodes. I'll show you one or two. Your rectifier diodes on your ATX power supply, if you ever looked at like this, yeah, where the two diodes effectively back to back, that one's marked, that one isn't. That one's marked again, and I'll just zoom down. Okay, there you can see the symbols on them. So the middle pin is the junction of the two cathodes, yeah? See it there as well, see it there. That's this, the two cathodes connected together. That's why we have these type of diodes in our ATX power supplies. So there's another little mystery solved. If you ever thought it was so that two diodes in parallel can handle twice the current, that's not the reason. It's because it rectifies and gives you positive here no matter which way the current's flowing here. Okay, so that is a half bridge circuit. But there's a little bit more to this story. So let's have a look at our circuit board again. To make this clear, I'm going to desolder the transistors and these two transformers so we can actually have a look. And I'm going to draw onto the side of the circuit board where these components were. Okay, so let me just remove these first. From the positive of the bridge rectifier there, this will connect to the collector of one of the transistors. Well, that's reading really six ohms. That one doesn't go. It is this one. The reason it's reading six ohms is this is the little thermistor I told you about. The black thing that looks a bit like a capacitor, yeah. So that's the thing that stops the inrush current. It's reading six ohms. So from here, via the, via the thermistor, we get six ohms. So that's the collector with one of them. This is the emitter and it goes to the collector of the other one, okay? So we can draw these, hopefully, on the circuit board. So from here, we have a collector. That is the emitter. That's the collector, it's there. Okay, and that's connected via this track, via this thermistor to the positive. So you can see that, yeah? We don't need to worry about the base that's just being driven to switch these things. The emitter of this one goes to the collector of the other one, which is there. And the emitter is here. Okay. So we can see that these points are connected together. Yeah. And then the emitter goes to the negative end of the bridge rectifier. That's the minus. I mean, I can draw it on the track. It goes all the way around here. Yeah. That's the circuit. Now, where is our transformer coil connected? Well, we know it connects to the junction of these two transistors, emitter, collector. Okay, and that goes to the primary, which is here. So that is the junction of our transformer from the collector of this one to here. And the winding is there to there, okay? The other end then, according to our half bridge diagram, should connect to the junction of the two capacitors, does it? Here, this is the junction. And no, it doesn't go there. So where does it go? Well, it actually goes to this other capacitor here. Yeah, let's see if we can see it. End of the winding to the capacitor. And the other side of the capacitor goes to the junction. So our coil isn't connected directly to here. In fact, we have it here, the capacitor. There, uh, okay, on our circuit. The capacitor is this one. It's about, let's see, what is it? It's 100, 105, it's, it's a one microfarad capacitor. One microfarad, 250 volt. So that goes there, okay? 
How about how the end of the transformer, this end, connects to here? Because you can see it doesn't come across where I've drawn this track at all. It goes somewhere else. It goes to here. Yeah, you can see in actual fact, this doesn't go down here. It goes to there. Okay, and that is one of the windings on this transformer, the one that's driving the base circuit, okay? And from here, it goes to one of the other pins on the transformer. Doesn't go to there, doesn't go to there. It goes here. Specifically there, because here you can see the resistance of the winding. It goes to there, yeah? And that, if you look at it, comes back to the junction of our two transistors. Okay? So on our diagram, as well as having the capacitor here, we also have another coil here. And that coil is one of the windings on this one that's driving the base. Now I'll explain what this is doing. First of all, this winding. So this is part of the small transformer that's also driving the base. And as you can see, when I was looking on there, there's also another winding on here. And the other winding is the one that actually drives the base circuit, okay, from the Portsmouth modulator. And there's other windings on here as well. This winding is in the main current path. So when this transistor switches on, and effectively shorts this capacitor, the current flows through here, through this other coil, through the transformer in the direction of the red arrow, positive and negative, through here, and because it's AC, it's not DC, it passes through this capacitor. This is one microfarad, 250 volt. It passes through that capacitor that way and effectively discharges this capacitor. As before, when this transistor is off and this one turns on, it effectively shorts this one. So the discharge coming from the capacitor comes through this capacitor, this, this small one. That way, yeah, through the transformer coil in the direction I drew there, and through that transistor. So what's this capacitor doing here, and what's this coil doing here? Well, it's not to effectively only allow a certain amount of current flow through here, because once this charges or discharges in one direction or the other, it will effectively block DC. Yeah. What it's there for is to make this more efficient. We know that these two transistors in this half bit effectively put a square wave on this end of the transformer, like I showed you here. What this capacitor does, and this inductor, it forms a circuit which is called LLC. If you know a bit about electronics, C is capacitance, L is inductance. L is the symbol for inductance because I is already the symbol for current. It's got to be something else, yeah? So L is inductance. So the LLC circuit, there's a lot of mathematics involved with this. If you want to know the maths, you're welcome to go and look it up, yeah? But if you just want to know what it does rather than how exactly it does it, and if we pair with it, that's all you really need to know. What this does, the addition of the extra coil, and by the way, L, L, C, if it wasn't clear. Inductor, inductor, capacitor, if it wasn't clear, LLC. Now it's clear, yeah. What this does is, instead of getting a square wave, driving your transformer, this is what's called a resonant circuit. Yeah? Resonant, resonance, ringing, yeah. Let's think of it like a bell. So you've got a bell. Uh, we love analogies here. You've got a bell in your church with a clanger on it, yeah? And you rock the bell, and the clanger hits one side or the other. Bang, 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 yeah? Effectively, that clanger is like a square wave. It's hitting this end, then it's hitting that end, then it's hitting this end, it's hitting that end, and so on, yeah? 
But the bell is resonant. So what does the bell do? It rings. So you get the thump from the clanger, but the bell goes, hmm. That's the resonance, yeah? And what it's doing is turning that thump into a sine wave. That's that hmm noise you hear from the bell. And that's what our circuit does. This has physical resonance. How is as electrical resonance? So having this circuit basically turns that square wave into a sine wave. I don't draw them very well like this, but you can see it here. So the waveform driving our transformer is now not a square wave. It's a very close approximation of a sine wave. And sine waves drive transformers more efficiently than square waves do. And that's why we have this circuit. I hope you like the bell analogy. So if you like, these two transistors are still driving one end of the transformer with a square wave. But the resonance circuit resonating makes it like a sine wave. Okay? So that's why we have two capacitors in our ATX power supply. That's also why we have double diodes on the output. Yeah, the two rectifier diodes. This. And that's why we have an LLC circuit. That's why we have this capacitor here. These often fail, by the way. Always check that capacitor if you've got a problem with the ATX power supply or any other LLC circuit. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. I hope you like that because I thought it was a bit of a brainwave. Yeah, 4 a.m. moment made me think of that analogy. And please get into the comments below. Let me know what you think. Yeah, do you understand that now? Did you have problem understanding it before? Is it clear? Comments, guys. And I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now.